So guys, in this video, I want to fix something that I really hate. Gaming tables at home. A lot of people have problems storing them, and that's one of the biggest questions that I get asked. So at IKEA, they do a two foot by three foot frame. It's massive. Everybody says, why don't you mount them on the wall? The problem is for that, it just looks like you've got some dirt hanging on your wall. So what I'm gonna do with this is we're gonna make it attractive for hanging on the wall. And we're also gonna turn it into a kill team table and a small scale war gaming table. So let's get cracking. I wanna fix something that I really hate. Everybody says, why don't you mount them on the wall? The problem is for that, it just looks like you've got some dirt hanging on your wall. I'm gonna make it attractive for hanging on the wall. And we're also gonna turn it into a kill team table this picture frame is perfect. So now this is gonna be the bit that you see when you're hanging it on the wall, um, which is far more attractive than looking at static grass and dirt in it. This picture frame is perfect. And it looks rather cool. Best faction ever. So this is me trialing a sort of proof of concept. Two foot by three foot is a great size for playing Kill Team. It's also great for playing games like 15 mil shrunk down war games because it's half the size of a six by four but also the reason i want to do this as a sort of proof of concept is if it works rather well i wouldn't mind buying another one two of these and doing them in different styles but trying to do them in a different style that we can possibly link these together so with it being proof of concept i'm not doing anything crazy with this i'm just using some black five millimeter underfloor insulation foam and I'm scribing just some tiles in so it's just not a flat green table and I texture that up just with some tin foil. And I'm just priming it with some acrylic paint just because I'm going to dry brush these flags up and apply washes and everything and this foam can be quite porous uh, so it's always good to put a good primer on there so when you come to do your washing and things later it doesn't just all run away i mix up a very horrible base greeny color for the base of the uh, where the flock and base readies are going this color doesn't really matter uh, just as long as it's not going on the black foam because it, it does dull down the base readies and flocks quite a bit so if it's a little bit of a, a darker green it helps emphasize the basing products for dry brushing i'm just using creams and grays but i will go back in there later and add some more colors once we've got all the base readies and everything spread around because you want to get the dry brushing to sort of blend in all the base readies with the dry brushing of the tile so it all makes sense I'm using some fast dry basing glue uh, to put that all over where you want the base of the ground material to go and then I'm going to be using patchy planes base ready. I'm using this because it's as generic as they come um, and just sp spread that all over. I have sieved this so it's a lot finer and I go in there later and just throw on a few extra coarser pieces of stone. And the reason that I thought about doing it this way is just because if I'm applying terrain to this I don't want it to be uneven. Plus, I want it to look okay for when I do my 15 mil scale stuff. So I'm sort of doing this with two scales in mind. And once I'm happy with that, I just spray it with some matte scenic sealant just to get the first amount of glue on. But while that's still wet, I'm going to just apply some static grass on top of that using just a, a sieve. 
I'm not using any applicators. I want to make this board as achievable to as anybody as possible. No power tools, just a knife and a few flocks, and anybody can make this. So that's why I'm not using an applicator. And this is two mil autumn static grass. It's just to add to the patchiness of the patchy planes. The next day, once that's dry, I'm gonna do a bit more dry brushing to make it a bit more brownier and creamier. But what you do with that dry brush is you actually take it up onto the base ready a little bit. And this is so you get the transition from the base ready to the, the tiles. And that just looks a little bit more natural because you've got like the dust of the tiles and everything blending in with the, the ground and the dirts of the base ready. Now in hindsight, I should have really sprayed the inside of this frame black before I started. This wood is really cheap, MDF I believe, and it's very, very porous and it's just eating paint. Um, so if you are going to do this yourself, take the frame apart, spray it all black on the inside, and then you should be fine. Now you don't have to do this, but because it's just a big flat board, I'm trying to add a bit more visual interest with a few cheap pigment powders. These are just some chalk pastels from the works. I think it was like three pound a pack for some earth tones. And all you do is break them up and then just stipple them in place. I do spray them with some matte scenic sealant. And the reason I'm doing this is just to help spread them out a bit more. So it's not a, like a stark color transition. It sort of blends it in a lot nicer. And I even put this over static grass as well, because it adds sort of dead patches of grass and helps sort of blend the grass in. I'm using uh, an oil wash over the tiles just to warm them up a little bit and add a bit of wet residual dirt and things laying around. Now the one thing that will happen when you're using washers or anything wet at this stage, it will absorb into your ground material. So you are going to get tide marks. But this does help blend into the rest of the board. But at the moment it will look a bit over the top and very sharp edges. How you will tie that and blend that into the board, you just simply sprinkle a bit more of your ground material it like fine patches around the edges and let it spill a little bit, let it do its thing. And then once you seal that in place, there's some subtle variation when you're getting close to them tiles, which just adds a bit more visual interest for not a lot of work. Uh, and it can make a very basic board look quite nice. Now, like I said, this is a proof of concept. This is not my best work. I literally threw this together in, a, in an hour or two uh, just to see whether I like it, see whether I'll use it. And I do. It's absolutely amazing. I mean, for Warcry, Kill Team, and even like I've said, small scale wargaming. The one thing that I really want to do is get another one of these, and I'm going to build like more of a stony area with some steps down onto this board so I can link two together. So if I want to play full scale war games like Age of Sigma or 40k or One Page Rules systems, I've got gaming tables that don't look like gaming tables on my wall. So guys, this is just a proof of concept and that's why it's a bit rough. Uh, I am going to be cutting this out uh, and I'm going to be putting in an, another gaming table that's more themed around my Black Templars. Um, I even bought some cheap terrain that's pre-painted uh, and the real reason of doing this video is just literally to show you, you don't need any power tools, you can build a good size kill team table and even if we link a few of them together, we can build a very good gaming space without any power tools and it's reasonably affordable and it looks very good on your wall rather than just having sand hanging on your wall. So I'm going to be featuring this board quite a lot and especially in next week's video. I went to Warhammer World to pick up something pretty special and uh, you'll see more of that next week. Have you, have you got us a tight? You'll see. But anyway guys, thanks for watching, thanks for tuning in and I'll uh, see you again for the next video. Love, love, love. So I'm going to be featuring some. Fe uh, so I'm going to be featuring. So I'm going to be featuring it coming up in some. Uh, fuck's sake. So I'm going to be featuring this board in a few videos coming up because I can't wait. So I'm going to be. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks for watching. Thanks for tuning in, and I'll see you for the next one. Yeah. Oh yeah, love, love, love. <laughs>